Men and women who lived in Mexico in ancient times, whose expertise was to deal with awareness, believed that human beings are the beholders of a most peculiar dualism. They were not referring to traditional dualism such as body and mind or matter and spirit, but to the dualism between the self and something they called the energy body. They consider the self to be a holistic unit which includes both body and mind, matter and spirit together, and they define the energy body as a particular conglomerate of energy fields belonging to each of us individually that has the capability of being transformed into a perfect replica of the self and vice versa. They believed that the self has the capability of being transformed into a perfect replica of the energy body, that is to say, a conglomerate of sheer energy fields. Those men and women of ancient Mexico invented and developed a series of movements which helped them to store enough spare energy to accomplish this dual transformation. They handled and transmitted this knowledge from generation to generation up to the present. The movements you are about to see were called the Twelve Basic Passes to Gather Energy. They are part of a vast series of movements which were taught to us the last links of a long chain of such men and women. They were taught especially to Carlos Castaneda by his immediate teacher Don Juan Matus and by another practitioner named Lujan. Carlos Castaneda calls it tensegrity, a term he borrowed from architecture. Tensegrity is the property of skeleton structures that employ continuous tension members and discontinuous compression members in such a way that each member operates with the maximum efficiency and economy. We consider this term most appropriate because this system of movements is the quintessence of tensing and relaxing the muscles and tendons of the body. The persons who are going to execute the twelve basic passes to gather energy are Kaili Lundal, Nai Murez, and Reni Murez. The three of them belong to a class of beings that those people of ancient Mexico called Chakmuls, or the fierce guardians of energy sites. It has been stated and proven to us that this set is the basis for acquiring enough energy to enter into a particular state of well-being that can give definition to the energy body. To give definition to the energy body is the first step towards enlarging the parameters of perception. For those men and women of ancient Mexico, experts in dealing with awareness, to enlarge the parameters of perception meant entering into bona fide, all-inclusive new worlds. All-inclusive meant to them that those perceived new worlds were not mere concatenations of the mind, but worlds in which one can live and die. For them, entering into new worlds was the core of their magical expertise. Magic is a most inadequate term in this case, for it is loaded with insurmountable negative connotations. Those practitioners bypassed this negative slant by maintaining that their magic was merely a maneuver of perception. We have found out from our own experience that it is indeed a maneuver of perception, but a maneuver of such a magnitude that only the most daring and level-headed men and women can accomplish it. The first movement is a minor movement, helping the flow of immunity. This movement stimulates sites of energy that keep one awake. It stimulates the flow of saliva. It also stimulates glands under the chin that flush toxins out. Do the movement with the right hand first, then with the left, then with both hands. Position of the hand is that the fingers are pulled in close to the hand. The index finger is fully extended. The thumb is held close 
to the index finger. The palm is held very tight and straight. The wrist is held fully extended. As one bends down, the chin is jutted out. The index finger is brought in and pressure is applied up under the chin. The index finger begins to vibrate back and forth. The opposite arm is pulled high up over the back and held against the kidney level. The second movement is a minor movement, Lobster's Strike. A layer of sensations prior to sensations of man is reached with this movement. The strike has to come all the way from the kidneys. It is a vibratory movement that shakes the entire body. This type of vibration keeps the body in an optimum state of well-being. The position of the, of the arm is that it's bent at a 45 degree angle. The tendon is tense, the wrist is fully extended, the palm is flat and straight. Notice on the opposite arm when it comes back, the elbow is pulled all the way back and up, and the palm is facing up. The third movement is a major movement, the ball of energy.
This movement rounds up dispersed energy that exists around the body. It makes it into a concrete unit that can be described as a ball. It exercises the glands around the pectoral muscles and the axilla and is essential for prodding the immunity system. It starts with the wrists almost touching one another. One is perpendicular to the other. Make sure that each wrist is fully extended backwards and that the elbow is mobile. The elbow follows the hand. Start with the left hand over the right and then begin counting. Notice that when the movement ends, the hands are like claws that rip the ball of energy apart. Do this movement five times, then rub the hands on the lung area. Repeat it another five times. And rub the hands on the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, spleen areas. Repeat it another five times. And rub the hands on the area of the genitals. Number four is a major movement, teasing the web. This is another very old technique to reach a layer of sensations prior to that of man. Its function is to excite countless sites of energy on the wrists and the hands, which bring general health and well-being. There are three parts to teasing the web. Snapping the web. This movement creates a kind of itching on the membrane between the fingers. Since man has no membrane there, the movement purports to transport one to a very ancient level of sensation by activating a vague memory of a membrane. Start with the left hand. Notice that the finger of the left hand is in between the third and the little finger of the right hand. 
the left index finger is locked with the thumb of the right hand. Do this movement five times with one hand. Then do it five more times with the other hand. Dispersing the energy. The energy that has been awakened in the hands by snapping the webs is then dispersed throughout the arms into the body itself by pressing sites of energy on the backs of the hands. Press five times on the back of one hand, then five times on the other. Lacing the fingers. Any energy that is released into the body itself always has an unpredictable effect. So it is more than necessary to release any excess. Do this movement five times with the left thumb on top. Then five with the other hand with the right thumb on top. Number five is a minor movement, rolling energy. Rolling the hands forward gives the body its energy depth. Pushing the hands out to the sides determines its energy width. A position of the hands to be avoided is a curling up of the palm. The palm needs to be straight, flat, maintained in that position. Do five short rolls to the front, then five long rolls to the front. Push out to the sides, also five times.
Number six is a minor movement, massaging the glands of the shoulder blades. Position of the arms is up at shoulder level. Turn. Isolate and squeeze the muscles surrounding the shoulder blades. Number seven is a major movement, the access breath. This sorcery pass is of utmost importance because it moves the earthly terminal of the invisible axis of the energy that surrounds the body from its site on the ground and then projects it out into infinity. It acts on the earthly terminal so that the energy is floating rather than grounded. This sorcery pass considers that a vertical axis of energy goes to the ground through a point just behind the genitals. As the hands begin to come down, the index fingers push against one another into a down position. Once they reach the eye level, the eyes make contact with the fingertips and maintain that gaze for the entire movement. The hands pause at the center of the body. As the body bends down, point the fingers at that spot on the ground. Keeping the eyes fixed on the fingers, the eyes and fingers pull the terminal of that axis of energy. Begin to move it up, pulling its bottom end with the fingers. Place it then on the center of the body. Follow the tip of the pointed fingers with the eyes to keep the energy there. Bring the hands up then and touch the knuckles of the thumbs with the lips. Rest the tips of the fingers on the forehead. Extend the head back fully with the legs straight and exhale. Inhale as the arms and hands snap upward, projecting the earthly terminal of energy out into infinity. Use the eyes and the stomach to send it out. Inhale as the arms sweep up. Exhale as they begin to lower, pausing at the eye level. As they pause at the center of the body, inhale. Exhale as they begin to lower. As the forearms rest on the legs, 
Inhale and exhale three times. Inhale as the hands begin to come up, pausing at the center. Exhale. Inhale as they come up. Exhale. Inhale as the arms snap up. Number eight is a minor movement, forging the central power of the body. Cradle the crown of the head on the right bent up arm. Keep the back straight and fully extended. This movement brings the energy of the right side of the body into the head and the energy of the left half into the adrenals. By shifting in this manner back and forth, the energy of the adrenals is mixed with the energy of the head. Number nine is a minor movement, two prongs on the face. This movement promotes youth. It also clears the toxins that are held in the face from stress and tension, and it replaces old cells. Place the thumbs up under the chin and push upward. Place the index and second finger next to the eyes and press inward. 
hold it, and release. Number 10 is a major movement, reaching the energy hole above the head. This is another of the most important sorcery passes. It has to do with the transfer of energy from outside the body to the body itself. There are secret caches of energy right above the head and on both sides of it. This energy is of two kinds, dark and light, heavy and fluffy. The dark and heavy is above to the right of the head. The light and fluffy is above to the left of the head. The dark and heavy energy is outward bound. The light and fluffy energy is inward bound. The aim of this sorcerer's pass is to use these two types of energy for a total revamping of the body. The first is an inward spiral. Three inward spirals close to the legs. Five inward spirals upward. Snap the arms up. The second is outward spiral. Three at the side, five outward spirals up, up, grab outward, five, 
five outward spirals down. Flatten the palm, thighs, snap the arms up. Number 11 is a major movement, infinity breath. By concentrating the attention on the hands, bring the energy from the ground, around the bottom of the feet, up the spine, and continue up the back, circling it over the head and finally pausing at the forehead. Bring the hands and the energy down the front of the body, passing over the genitals to the ground, and from the ground out into infinity. Inhale in order to bring and place the energy on the back. This inhalation is for strength. Exhale to bring fluidity to the front. The push of the lungs releases everything that is not needed out into infinity. This sorcery pass brings fluidity to the front and strength to the back.
Number 12 is a major movement, the antenna. Another extremely mysterious pass that has to do with the level of awareness prior to man's. Sorcerers maintain that there is an enormity of energy in the universe coming from silent and invisible sources, dead stars. This pass allows one to use it. It is a major sorcery pass. Of all the many, many passes that are known, this one has been selected because of its darkness and its endless possibilities. It is possible to use this pass to gather energy that is outside the realm of the common sense of the world of everyday life. In this sorcery pass, the hands act as antennae, pulling and reaching for that energy. To warm up, the right, the, the right thumb rubs at the base of the left thumb. The little finger and thumb press together, snap out to the front three times. There are two positions for the hand. The two middle fingers are pressed against the thumb. The two fingers are pulled back tight. Tension is on the back of the hand. The wrist is either fully extended straight or pulled all the way back. Pull the wrists all the way back, straighten them as the arms extend. The wrists remain straight, one and a half circles to the front and two to the back, three sets. Wrists extended back. Straighten the wrists. Isolate and squeeze the muscles surrounding the shoulder blades to move the arms. Three short exhales, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale for the circles in the front, exhale for the two in back.
Inhale. Exhale as the hands snap out to the front. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale as they pull. Exhale. And if you like the podcast, I would like to also take a moment to remind you to subscribe to this channel or sign up to the newsletter if you would like to be notified when I release new content. And if you would like to support my work, then you can download the podcast for a small supporter's remuneration. Links are in the description. Here's to you and your fulfillment and growth into every tomorrow to come.